It's taken from Isaiah 52, verses 13, 14, and 15, and chapter 53, verses 1 through 12. See, my servant will act wisely. He will be raised and lifted up and highly exalted. Just as there were many who were appalled at him, his appearance was so disfigured beyond that of any man, and his form marred beyond human likeness. So he will, will he sprinkle many nations, and kings will shut their mouths because of him. For what they see were not told, they will see, and what they have not heard, they will understand. Who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrow and familiar with suffering. Like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities, and the punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds we are healed, we all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her, her shearers is silent. So he did not open his mouth, and by oppression the judgment he was taken away. And who can speak of his descendants? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people he was stricken. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life a guilt offering, he will see his offspring and prolong his days. And the Lord and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After the suffering of his soul, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great and he will divide the spoils with the strong because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Here endeth my reading. I'm reading from the Gospel of John chapter 18 the fulfillment of some of Isaiah's words. When he had finished praying, Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kidron Valley. On the other side, there was an olive grove, and he and his disciples went into it. Now Judas, who betrayed him, knew the place, because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas came to the grove, guiding a detachment of soldiers and some officials from the chief priests and Pharisees. They were carrying torches, lanterns, and weapons. Jesus, knowing all that was going to happen to him, went out and asked them, Who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. I am he, Jesus said, and Judas the traitor was standing there with them. When Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, Who is it you want? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. I told you that I am he, Jesus answered. If you are looking for me, then let these men go. This happened so that the words he had spoken would be fulfilled. 
I have not lost one of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Jesus commanded Peter, Put your sword away. Shall I not drink the cup the Father has given me? Then the detachment of soldiers with its commander and the Jewish officials arrested Jesus. They bound him and brought him first to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised that Jesus, that Jesus that he advised the Jews that it would be good if one man died for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple were following Jesus. Because this disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the high priest's courtyard. But Peter had to wait outside of the door. The other disciple, who was known to the high priest, came back, spoke to the girl on duty there, and brought Peter in. You are not one of his disciples, are you? The girl at the door asked Peter. He replied, I am not. It was cold, and the servants and officials stood around a fire they had made to keep warm. Peter also was standing with them, warming himself. Meanwhile, the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. I have spoken openly to the world, Jesus replied. I always taught in synagogues or at the temple where all the Jews come together. I said nothing in secret. Why question me? Ask those who heard me. Surely they know what I said. When Jesus said this, one of the officials nearby struck him in the face. Is this the way you answer the high priest, he demanded? If I said something wrong, Jesus replied, testify as to what is wrong. But if I spoke the truth, why did you strike me? Then Anna, set, Anna sent him, still bound, to Caiaphas, the high priest. As Simon Peter, Peter stood warming himself, he was asked, You are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it, saying, I am not. One of the high priest's servants, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, challenged him. Didn't I see you with him in the olive grove? Again Peter denied it. And at that moment, a, roast, a rooster began to crow. Then the Jews led Jesus from Caiaphas to the palace of the Roman governor. By now it was early morning, and to avoid ceremonial uncleanness, the Jews did not enter the palace. They wanted to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and asked, what charges are you bringing against this man? If he were not a criminal, they replied, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said, take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. But we have no right to ex execute anyone, the Jews objected. This happened so that the words Jesus had spoken, indicating the kind of death he was going to die, would be fulfilled. Pilate then went back inside the palace summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea, Jesus asked, or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew? Pilate replied. It was your people and your chief priests who handed you over to me. What is it that you have done? Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jews but now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, you are right in saying I am a king. In fact, for this reason I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. What is truth, Pilate asked. With this he went out again to the Jews and said, I find no basis for a charge against him, but it is your custom for me to release to you one prisoner at the time of the Passover. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? They shouted back, no, not him. Give us Barabbas. Now Barabbas had taken part in a rebellion.
Continuing with the story in the chapter 19, Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him, and the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put on him a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews! And they smote him with their hands. Pilate therefore went forth again and saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. Then Jesus came forth, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate saith unto them, Behold the man. When the chief priests therefore and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid, and went again into the judgment hail, and saith unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then saith Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee, and have power to release thee? And Jesus answered, Thou couldst have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. And thence, henceforth Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. And whoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. And when Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. And it was the preparation of the Passover in about the sixth hour. And he saith unto the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried, away, cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? And the chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then delivered he them, therefore, unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him and the two others with him on either side, one and Jesus in the middle. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross, and the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. This title then read many of the, this title then read many of the Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city. And it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. Then said the chief priests of the Jews to Pilate, Write not the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when he had crucified Jesus, took his part garments and made four parts, to every soldier a part, and also his coat, now the coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout. They said, therefore, among themselves, let us not rend it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which saith, they parteth my raiment among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots. These things, therefore, the soldiers did. Now they stood by the cross of Jesus his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. And then saith he to the disciples, Behold thy mother. And from that hour the disciples took her into his own home. And after this, Jesus, knowing all things, were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a, a sponge with vinegar, and put it on uh, hyssop, and, and part of it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. 
and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was an high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Then came the soldiers and brake the legs of the first and of the other which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they brake not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and forth came, forthwith came there out blood and water. And he that saw it bear record, and his record is true, and he knoweth that he saith true, that ye might believe. For these things were done, that the scripture should be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. And again, another scripture saith, Thou shalt look on him whom they pierced. And after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him leave. He came therefore and took the body of Jesus. And there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pound weight. They took, then took they the body of Jesus and wound it in linen clothes with the spices as the manner of the Jews is to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new sepulchre, where he would never man yet laid. There laid they Jesus, therefore, because of the Jews' preparation day, for the sepulchre was nigh at hand. Here ended the reading of the scriptures. Thank you to Linda, Wayne, and Carol for reading scripture for us this evening. Um... I am a firm believer and there is nothing that I can stand up here and say to you that even begins to compare with what is written in God's holy word all of the time, but especially when we are focusing upon what Jesus went through for us. That being said, I'm going to attempt to give you something else as well. So last night during Monday Thursday service, I asked that we look at a different aspect of Jesus that we often overlook this time of year. And I'm going to ask that we do the same thing tonight as we observe Good Friday. Last night, I wanted us to focus on Christ as a servant. Tonight, I'm going to ask you to consider the submission of Christ. Now these two things can be tied together when you think about it in our own society today. You see, it makes sense that a servant would submit to what the master tells them to do. But there is a key difference when it comes to Jesus. You see, in our world, a servant submits because the master, to the master because he does not have a choice. Think about it this way. If this year I decided that I, you know what, I don't want to do the paperwork for a charge conference, I just don't feel like it, I would have to answer to all of you, and I would have to answer to the district superintendent. You see, I submit to doing the paperwork because, well, I have to. But Jesus is not in the same boat as a servant here. You see, he did not have to submit. Jesus being of divine nature, he could have called a stop to his suffering at any time. I often consider the words of the hymn, 10,000 Angels. The chorus ending, he could have called 10,000 angels to destroy the world and set him free. He could have called 10,000 angels, but he died alone for you and me. And what an amazing thought for all of us. You see, at any time, Jesus could have called an end to the suffering he was experiencing. He could have stopped it from even starting. He had that power. However, he was willing to suffer so that we could be free of sin and so that we could have eternal life. Indeed, when you think about his life, 
he could have chosen right at the start of his ministry to forego all of the doubts, the ridicule, and the pain that he would experience. I ask you to remember back to right after his baptism when he is in the desert for 40 days and nights being tempted by Satan. He was offered the entire world by Satan. All he had to do was to bow down and worship Satan. But he was unwilling to do that knowing what he would face. When you think about what he experienced at the hands of the Romans, when you think about how hurt and betrayed he must have felt by the people yelling, crucify him. Many of those same people being the ones that less than a week earlier were laying their cloaks at his feet and praising him as the king that has come. If you think about how he was betrayed by one of his 12 closest friends and then denied by so many others, can you begin to see how tempting that offer Satan made him really was? But Jesus, being who he was, was willing to trust the plan that God had made for him. He was willing to trust that that was the right way. And he was willing to offer himself in perfect submission. As he went from place to place, as they passed him around, he had plenty of opportunity to say, no, I am not this man that you say I am. You are confused. You are wrong. As he was in the garden and Peter drew his sword to fight back, he had a chance to fight, to run. But he did not take those chances because he knew what God was going to do through him. So where do you find yourself on this Good Friday? Are you finding that you are willing to submit to the things that Christ is calling you to do? Are you earnestly asking him to put things into your heart and into your path and then following through so that his will may be done? You see, we often pray that thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But do we mean those words? You see, we do have the same power here that Christ did. Oh, I don't mean that we can call down the wrath of heaven and destroy the world. But we do, what we do have is free will that is given to us. We ultimately have the chance to go against what it is Christ is calling us to do. But if we are going to truly honor the way that Christ was willing to suffer and sacrifice for us, then we must begin to put ourselves into a position of submission, just like he did. Now, if you're wondering what that looks like, well, here is the first step. The first step is to acknowledge him as your Lord and Savior. The next step is to live in accordance your life in accordance with his teachings, to love your neighbor, to pray for your enemies, to be willing to be of service to anyone that needs your help, to take a stand of peace when others choose violence, and to be willing to lay down your life for others as well. You see, each of these are just a few things that Christ has taught us to do through his words, and more importantly, his actions. And if we are living in submission to his will, then we are to follow the example that he has left for us. So this evening, as you think about the pain, the suffering, the crucifixion and the death of Christ, I urge you to also think about his submission to the will of God. And I urge you to begin to ask him to make your heart one of submission as well. Amen.